Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria War in which we're playing as Hippogriffia. Now this game, this campaign, is set up to be on a historical, and we're right really at the beginning, it's January 1007. Placating the isolationists. The isolationist policies have long been championed by the sea ponies who view recent events as evidence that we should stick with isolationism. Instead of opening up, if we're to make progress, we have to make sure that they are placated, and then we'll designate trade ports. Contrary to what some claim, we're not looking to stick our heads in the sand and ignore the outside world. The city of Wingarden, Howlington, and Canterford will be dedicated to trade with the outside world, and through it, we can still be part of the world while watching its influence on us. But ministers disagree. A disagreement, and a budgeting committee is spiraled into an all row, all out row between the two ministers. Sea Pony Seafoam and Hippogriff Windlands have both come to the government to resolve the dispute which was over a package of transport funding meant to connect towns in Mount uh, Eris and Sequestria. Given the immense differences in infrastructure needed by Sea Ponies and Hippogriffs, neither minister is happy with the current arrangement. They have demanded that we split the funding with each minister arguing that the race more, has more complicated infrastructure requirements and thus should get the larger share of the funding. Right now we're balanced. Um, I don't want to choose either one, but we lose 60 political power, and I'm not about to lose 60 political power. We go with the sea ponies, we lose 10% construction speed. We already have no construction speed, so we're going to go with hippogriffs anyway, for now. So, hurts us slightly for political power, but for me, if you know my, me and this channel at all, I love PP. Um, in the meantime, we're just kind of hanging out on a historical here, because what we want to do is we want to go down a certain route, because I've been told by a few people, maybe, uh, to go, we should maybe try out the communist path eventually for... Uh, Hippogriffia. We're going to try to go down that path, but we'll see what happens. Crack Lightning returns. Uh, maybe in her storm he war hero, Crack Lightning touched down at a Queen Nova airport this morning to a waiting crowd of reporters and fans. His trusted custom built airplane, the Spear of Starfield, gleamed in the morning light as it taxied to its parking spot. The three month solo tour of the world has been talk the talk of Hippogriffia, with many wondering what he discovered beyond the borders of the island. His worst report from Air's Post have been reprinted in numerous outlets, and his celebrities turned them into a rallying cry for the isolationist elements within Hi Hippogriffia. There are many great sets in the wider world, Carthage chief among them, but I must say on the whole, the Storm King's barbarism is a rule rather than an exception outside of our fair nation. They have very little offer us except for endless isms, communism, liberalism, republicanism, all ideas which griffins and even ponies kill each other over every single day. We need to remain strong in the face of this violent new world, and reject these foreign ideas which would disrupt our peaceful way of life. There's a big world out there, and more heavy grips should experience it. Perhaps we should listen to his concerns. Sounds good to me. Reports of military aviation during the Storm War. All the armed services played their roles during the reclamation of Hippogriffia's territory from the Storm King, however. Special mention should be made about the Air Force's actions during the war. Uh, barring the support and cover provided to the Navy and Army in their various battles, it was also instrumental in the final defeat of the Storm King's army during the Battle of Ein Throtgorait. Air superiority had already been the Hippogriffians' claw since the beginning of their surprise war on the Storm King's forces when they quickly and efficiently overwhelmed the Storm King's air force, which most was grounded, not expecting a large enemy force to appear from beneath the ocean. During the final battle, the Air Force ensured that all the Storm King's airships were destroyed. These airships played an important part in the Storm King's campaigns that gave him a tactical advantage and a strategic advantage over his enemies, carrying large amounts of warriors, materials, and weapons at his fairly fast pace, easily outmaneuvering his opponents and positioning his forces to deliver crushing attacks on the weak points. These same airships, however, weren't quick enough to face the lightning strikes of the biplanes which composed the Air Force. One of the many ships or airships to join the scrapyard was a flagship of the Storm King, being destroyed by Crack Lightning himself, who was lauded as a hero for his actions that day. Together with the other branches of the military and providential help, or providential help from the element of bearers, the Storm King's rampage through Zebrica came to an end. Peace and harmony returned to Hippogriffio. The tactics employed by the Air Force during the war were still taught in our nation's military colleges and serve as an important building block all pilots must master to ensure the integrity of our skies. We do rule the skies. Cool, but happy February, everybody. So if you read about divided society, please go ahead. We're going to try to make sure we keep ourselves united, and we're going to go with flying formation, because I like that one the most. Um, like in the isolations, 15% more stability would be nice, and they'll have splendid isolationism. Oh god. For literature and universities. Ever since we exposed ourselves to the outside world, after our long sequester and sequestria, foreign products have been coming into the hippogriffia. Perhaps the most important of these are books and the ideas that they hold, from works of literature to science to philosophy. Our younger generation are voraciously devouring these new reading materials, and so they and do so, they pick up some of the ideas and make them their own. One of the greatest concern to us are the political ideas they've been absorbing. While hippogriffia has always been a stable, absolute monarchy, many among the younger generation are now discovering that there are other ways of organizing society. Ranging from constitutionalism to republicanism to nationalism to even most radical ideas such as fascism and communism, yay. Right now the curiosity is intellectual, but we know how fast these intellectual ideas can take hold. I thought they could eventually pose a rule. We should keep an eye on this. But we're going to go with, as much as I want universal education, um, I want the uh, heiress stock exchange. The world is woven together more tightly than ever before. Unlike the current currents and winds, trade, and wealth, and prosperity is more understood as a flow than a fixed thing. Opening the era of stock exchange will let us partake in this flow and control it to some extent. That'd be nice. 
And we're gonna just go. I have we went ahead and just let's go and start making a, a civvy because I want to make as many civvies as possible because I don't know what route the world's gonna take this campaign. But what we want to do in this campaign is uh, maybe get a little commie or become a little communist and keep uh, our communist leader happy and choosing merciful actions eventually and heeding Sky Star's advice, you know, and taking choices in the focus tree that would work together eventually with uh, the harmonists. So we'll definitely cooperate with the harmonists here as we organize the left. When's the last time I actually played as a communist nation? It's been a while, at least at the time of this recording. Sea Pony Conscription, it is what it is. Um, so the socialist and liberal clubs, new ideas are spreading across hippogriffia, brought in by our new contact with the outside world. Clubs are formed, discussing and spreading these ideas, which range from liberal ideas of free trade and representative to government, inspired by the Griffonian three principles to more radical ones. Cynicalist writings, both of national and revolutionary varieties, from Wing Body and Aquilia, have attracted readers, and some clubs even promote communist ideas imported from Stalingrad. Although none have yet called for anything violent, most of the membership of these clubs consists of curious young griffs, prone to experimentation, as well as a few older ones who are dissatisfied with the monarchy and its handling of the Storm King's invasion. Uh, order them to be shut down. It's their right to exist, at least for now. But yeah, I definitely want to get a uh, stock exchange, which stocks uh, interest me heavily, maybe in the real world. But then we'll go over here and do educa universal education. Uh, every child born in a nation has the right to be given a full education, both on land and in the sea. Whether rich or poor, or and whether sea pony or hippogriff, we cannot leave anybody or anyone behind. And uh, the Heirs First Committee, a group of veterans, protectionist economists, economists, and community activists gathered to uh, together today to announce the formation of the Heirs First Committee, a group of dedicated to preserving traditional hippogriffin values and protecting our economy from foreign takeover. The most prominent leaders were Seaponi Rathwood, the Queen's former advisor who had first proposed the move to Sequestria, and hippogriff flying ace Crack Lightning, who gave a patriotic speech at the opening of the committee. Mount Air stands stall like the mountain we must stand alone. We cannot depend on foreigners to help us, and neither should they depend on us. We've always been strong, self-sufficient, and proud of our cultures and traditions, and the Air's First Committee will see that that stays true into the 11th century and beyond. He was met with thunderous applause and launched in the second half of his speech with even more vigor. Liberal intellectuals who would have us believe that harmony means opening our markets and our borders to every creature, or funneling money and resources into charity projects in the North Zebrican Mandate. I believe harmony means a well-ordered, self-sufficient society that looks after its own. Eris first stands for the auto worker who is tired of seeing foreign cars drive their wages down, for the veteran tired of zebras accusing us of cowardice when we defeated the Storm King, for the small business owner tired of competing with foreign conglomerates who cheat the market. And more than that, Eris first stands for culture, our values, our history, and for a bright future for all of Griffio. Many newspapers have denounced Eris first as xenophobic, backwards, or fear-mongering. Still, their membership is quickly swelling, particularly in Sequestria, where sea ponies see very little to gain from international trade, as there are a few foreign products they want, and many are concerned about underwater, underwater manufacturing but being unable to compete with industrial giants in Equestrian Griffonio. That's good to see them standing for our values. We must accept progress and uh, seek to shut out the world. Well, we do this one, we lose political power, and... Uh, which sucks. But this one, we get political power, and uh, the cost of constructing underwater buildings decreases by 5 when we lose construction speed. I'm going to go with that one because I want more PP. Now, we're going to go communist, and I really like this person. Right after more stability and political power, but... Can we really make up 127 political power by the time we become communist? I don't think so. Um, like I said, I want more political power no matter what. So we might go with this person. As long as we're not supremacists, we're fine. It's, it's very little political power, but I'd rather take that for now because we're going to use that the entire campaign probably. And after that one, we'll do universal education, followed up with cut the industrial red tape. Our industry suffers from miles upon miles of red tape. It might have been well-intentioned, but it's simply stifling us. Rationalizing the bureaucracy, doing away with some of the regulatory framework, and consolidating the management of the remainder into a new organization will benefit our economy immensely. Because we only have only three research slots, so... And this one... Oh. We get 5% more political power, but the first socialist conference. The socialist book clubs have been spreading outside of the universities, as idealistic students try to spread their ideas amongst the general populace. While many of these groups uh, profess harmonic socialist and democratic socialist ideals, they want to work with the government to implement socialist economics and hippogriffia. There's an undercurrent of sedition in these groups as they all want at least as much devolution of power away from the monarchy as liberals do. More alarmingly, some of these groups openly call for the complete transformation of hippogriffia. These more radical groups are gaining popularity among the poor sea ponies and hippogriffs who are skeptical of the possibility of reform. The largest of these radicals among the sea ponies are anarchists who call for complete abolition of the state and to claim to represent the natural way of life of the sea ponies, advocating for the democratic and non-hierarchical school-based living. Meanwhile, the most popular group among hippogriffs is a communist faction which emerged around a charismatic and eccentric seapony named Posada, who claims that hippogriffia is uniquely suited to achieving a post-scarcity society, but only if it is transformed into a revolutionary dictatorship of the proletariat. While these groups are currently small, their membership is rapidly growing, and new ideas have reached us, or news has reached us, that they are planning a conference to debate their ideas and form a coalition of some kind, or presumably organized around whichever faction's ideas prove most persuasive. Break up this conference? Now nah, we're good. Cracking down will do more harm than good. 
Absolutely. And then we're going to get this for even more political power if we can. Encourage the automotive industry. A car did have some difficulties getting established in Hippogriffia. And being either able, neither able to fly or swim, but over time, more and more have come to enjoy it, both as a tool and as an entertainment. Time, our automotive industry will be one of the world's foremost, but Hippogriffs a stage of protest. A crowd of Hippogriffs stage a protest outside a local government office today. They claim that our government has been unfairly prioritizing the needs of sea ponies over those of hippogriffs, and that they demand this alleged bias be redressed at once. They're particularly outraged because the hippogriff form is their natural form, which they have served our kind well for millennia, and it find it galling that we are once again listening to the sea ponies after their suggestions got us years of languishing isolation when the Storm King arrived, even though in the end we fought him anyways and won. The picket line makes it impossible for the bureaucrats, bureaucrats who work in the office to get to work, and the protesters say uh, they will not leave until the government promises to reverse its course. So right now we're leaning towards sea ponies. Break up the protesters. And this would move us further towards sea ponies. Uh, there's only five political power. There's 30 political power. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. Ignoring them is the best option. They will be turn home eventually. I like balance, so that, gives us, that does give us more political power in the end, and stuff like that, so... Overall, I'm not really concerned about which one. Um, we are, there's our army. I converted a lot of our divisions. Now, these guys have the high priority. Uh, we, they were mostly light infantry first. They were 12 combat width with basically the same stuff on them. Uh, we have marines, which are actually okay. 14 combat width with the same stuff on them. We need some artillery. We have some tanks, which are relatively decent. So I'm not uh, too upset about that. Cement and steel is very nice. But we're going to come over here and grab um, this one. more construction speed and resource extraction gain, too. Even though we extract no chromium, we could use a spot mole steel, because isolation, oh, it hurts. But the rising lower classes, the benefits of our booming economy have not been distributed evenly. While opening up our markets has brought the prices of goods down and has made great profits for corporations via export and tourism, there's a rising discontent among the lower classes that are not getting their share of the national prosperity. While before much of the opposition, her trade policies have been from nationals and isolationists among the middle classes, afraid of foreign competition. Now much of the anger is coming from the proletariat, as socialist ideas once popular mainly among radical student groups have started percolating among the common workers. Popular discontent is directed more and more domestic business groups rather than distant foreigners and even at the monarchy itself, which is increasingly seen as a defender of inequality. A constitutionalist socialist labor party of Eris has been doing its best to moderate rhetoric and remind the people of that noble has been a good queen. But the fringe revolutionary workers party and post-civilization coalition of communities, anarchists have said in no unclear terms that the monarchy must be dissolved. I'm sure it's nothing to worry about, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see, you. I like logistics. Um, defense. Uh, let's wait. We have no immediate needs to change anything yet. Uh, like I said, let's wait. I, I'm not sure we want to change anything too radically quickly yet. But let's work on another city, shall we? To go underwater buildings. Underwater building slots. I want more cities. Universal education would be nice. Long distance trench is not bad. Stuff is okay. Factories. Three cities. That'd be nice. Uh, but, but more output. Uh, I mean, all these are very good. All these are very, very good. But at least we have a fourth research slot. It's 10.07. After this one, you get 3% more political power, which I do want more political power, but we could get more stability and thereby get more political power. Um, agricultural reform sounds pretty good to me. Or we just build more anyways. We want to build more. Of course, that would help with building too. Monthly population is okay. It's not super needed. There's a mountain of wakes. So... Stability is nice. Agricultural reform. The agricultural sector has been languishing in recent times. With all the development, both internally and abroad, the time has come for a dedicated effort to make sure that our farmers can keep feeding our people even if the worst happens. Nice. And up next, we're going to grab uh, offense. Sure. Because I want to start working on some of our army XP because that is real important. What are we missing here? Ah, carrier cast. Oh, God. We, we need carrier cast? Well, okay. Well. And these guys have erupted into civil war. The Republic versus the Constitutional Army. Oh, the army's staging a revolt. Soviet. And that will do, encourage private enterprises. As our nation grows, so will its industry. But it only blow up the nation to try to run everything centrally. They're countless talented and ambitious citizens within our nation, and if we just give them some encouragement, they'll provide us with plenty of new industries. Nice. And we will need a hypocrite miracle, too. We'll lose our tourism industry as soon as we enter a state of war. De developing the outer islands. Air bases, naval bases, which is nice. Field silos, dockyards. That's pretty good, too. And where are we at? Ah, we have a carrier there, too. Hello. Nice. Got some subs. We've got a normal task force for these guys. I'm going to go with fighter directive just because I want to make sure 
that our player doesn't die. We only have one, and we want as much sword efficiency as possible to have aerial dominance of the sea as best as we possibly can. But the social students. Something about our throne room, Queen, o Queen Noble. Looked over the report after a report of more industries trying to form unions and other socialist goals that those unions had declared. Well, many said they were forming in response to the rising inequality and deregulation. Wanted to look at their founding members, told Noble that all she needed to know. Sky started with her, but as usual, her daughter underestimated the severity of the situation. Once more, Noble wondered what would happen to Hippogriffia when she was gone. We should never let this get this far, Noble muttered, looking at another report. Look at this one. The glassmakers are organizing, and one of their chief organizers is Hopreys, who is one of Poseidon's top henchgriffs. I don't know. It doesn't seem so bad, says so Skystar. Seeing a blue seems nice, and she's pretty high up. And besides, all kingdoms have labor movements. This isn't just a labor movement, Noble snapped. They want to dispose of us. Communists, anarchists, Poseidus, uh, these, these new unions are full of them. You know what they do to creatures like us in Stalingrad? good? I should have done this a long time ago, but I'm still the queen. I'm going to ban these unions while I still can. Skystar was silent for a moment, but lost in thought. Noble hadn't heard Skystar be silent in a long time, and finally embraced her daughter in her, in her fins, holding her holding onto her. I'm sorry, Skystar. I don't want to crack down on our own subjects, but I haven't been this scared since the Storm King. I, I, I don't want to lose you. Skystar hugged her back, uh, trying to bring the words to tell her mom how wrong she was. Mom, I know you're scared. But I know a lot of them are real weird, but I just want they just want to negotiate on an even level with their bosses. Isn't that what harmony is all about? Every creature has a fair to say. Skystar's right. They just want a voice. We'll monitor these unions and ban them if they try anything. Skystar's right. The ministers disagree. A disagreement in the budgeting committee. Uh, I read this one at the beginning, didn't I? Yeah. I read this one at the beginning. So right now we're balanced. I'm not going to lose 60 political power. Um, political power cost goes down. I'm okay with that. We still have a little less than two months out. Oh! Well, the Republic is done well. Pressure engineering, nice. Um, resource efficiency gains, not bad. Spotting speed. Um, can't say for critical heads, movement, stuff like that. Uh, what do we want? Well, actually, getting field hospitals might not be a bad idea. Planes, it is 10.07. Yeah, that is definitely worth getting. Um, resource efficiency game, perhaps? Chief of Ahak. It's not bad. Over here, anything worthwhile? Helicopter research speed. Huh. Superior firepower. Interesting. Anything unique here? Research speed, industrial base goes up. Reinforce rate plus 5% standard electric. I kind of like, like that. Huh. Economists. Uh, better consumer goods would be nice. We're not saying that. Uh, so. 10%. I might just recommend we just get, come over here or grab something else. Or might we grab this for electronics? I mean, we're researching electronics all the time, anyways. Developing the outer islands, but. Yeah. There you go. Mass adoption of FM radio. Nice. Air's first rally in Starfield. Supporters of the controversial Air's first movement gathered together for a rally in Starfield. Waving flags and photographs of Queen Ovo. The Air's first supporters cheered and chanted the patriotism in a rowdy display. When the leader Raphael got up on the stage, the cheers grew even louder, quickly turning to boos as he told of the latest insults coming from the Zeros. Cowards, it calls, he claimed to the crowd. I have it right here, from the mouth of the political chief in Colte. The hippogriffs boast to the victory over the Storm King, as though fighting a single lucky battle after years of hiding could compare to the grueling campaigns we zebras fought against him and all across the continent. We save them, this is how they treat us. And then they come to the Zumidian refugee zone and explore their generosity. No more, I say. I say, Queen Nova was right to retreat to sequestria. She was right to emerge when she did, and we shall suffer no further slander to her people or our queen. The crowd's cheers were joined by the sound of propellers as Crack Lightning made a flyover in the spirit of Starfield, the custom fighter plane he had shot down one of the Storm King's mighty airships with. Over two hours of the rally, the crowd swelled with some 500 to nearly 1,000, with hundreds of passerbys and local residents getting swept up in the patriotic jubilation and signing up for the air's first movement. They certainly are enthusiastic, aren't they? Um, disarmed, huh? I'm not sure what I want to go with next. Anything here? Ooh, artillery attack, infantry defense. That's interesting. We don't need stuff for that for a while. We are pretty important on ship stuff. We have a research speed. Or is there anything else we do here first? Ah. Fuel silo, synthetic factory. Military factory, dockyards. I mean, we need dockyards, but like, military factories are also pretty good too. Anything else? Well, we can improve worker conditions. Why not? I'll we'll get one of these two. Why not? I'm going to trade with Skyfall. That'd be good. Massagena. Huh. 
Okay. Is there anybody to do? I guess not. Uh, let's see. Planes. What do we have here? Fighters. Cass. That's all I really care about. Here we go, train. Hello, who are you, fighters? Nice. Survivability status is good, too. Oh, let's see. Naval stuff. 1007, huh? I'm going to battleships. We're going to focus on carriers quite a bit. Oh, I'll get some of these smaller things first. But we're month out. We're going to start going that direction, too. National Defense Works. Yeah, why not? Modern wars are not wanted just on the battlefield, but in the factories as well. You must be ready to produce immense amounts of weaponry for when the war comes, and there's no time like the present to get started. Remember military factories and a, an additional building slot underneath? Nice. Three more ships. Ah. Good. Developing the Outer Islands. Mount Eris is a gleaming jewel of Hippogriffia, but a jewel needs a necklace to hold it. Too long, and we've ignored the golden ring of islands around us, and this must be rectified. Three Days of Freedom. Today marks the end of the national celebration known as the Three Days of Freedom. It's a relatively new holiday. Inaugurated uh, originally by Queen Oval as one uh, one-day celebration during our Exile Sequestria. After we emerged victorious of the Storm King and, re and returned to Mount Eris, the holiday is expanded to three days. On the first day, celebrations are held all across 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 Equestria to thank the ocean for protecting us. Seapoint is gathered with friends and family to enjoy undersea dinners and traditional activities like sea dancing and whale singing. On the second day of festivities, come immersed in Eris. Hippogriffs celebrate the Storm King's defeat with parties and live music performances. With the largest concert being held on the Harmonizing Heights. On the third and final day, all creatures come together to celebrate the return of our freedom. Sea ponies and hippogriffs are encouraged to meet with uh, on the beaches for large mixed parties. At the end of the day, parents and prominent community members give out presents for the children, and the capital queen Nova herself distributes presents to local children in a special ceremony. Despite being new, the three days of freedom are already extremely popular in both Eris and Sequestria. In light of the emerging societal divide between hippogriffs and sea ponies, many creatures see the holiday as a celebration of national unity as well as past victory. See, cheers for hippogriffia. Nice. Balanced, as all things should be. So we need more guns, we need more trucks, but we always need more trucks. We'll make a lot of uh, more ships, just so a lot more things are going to come on. We'll make all this up too eventually, hopefully. The ministers disagree. Uh, I think we did rather earlier, so. Increase by five, decrease it by five. Oh, for airs, first sports attack, not, tra not traditional clothing. A member of the Heiress First has been arrested and fined for harassing a griff wearing for me clothes, the Finning Griff, Hippogriff. An all out, work, uh, out of work tailor named Sue Stopper followed the victim showing uh, invectives, telling him to go back to Griffoni if you want to wear that, and finally escalating uh, to a physical, physical altercation where the victim was shoved against a wall, spreading his wing. Sue Stopper blamed Aquilian imports for destroying his business. While many have condemned the attack as evidence of Heiress First's xenophobic thuggery, others have expressed sympathy for Sue Stopper's situation even if they don't approve of his actions. Boring. The motor, the motor strikes. A simmering discontent among the working class has reached a boiling point today. Organized by the new unions, auto workers in both Sequestrian and Mount Eris have walked out of their jobs in a large-scale strike, citing low wages, unsafe working conditions, and callous, uh, callous supervisors. The industry has gone to ground to a standstill. Given the ideological leanings of many of the union leaders, it's difficult to tell exactly what would get them to go back to work, as although they privately or publicly say they mainly want increased wages and safety standards, many of them are known socialist radicals who have previously called for the abolition of the wage system. Scott Starr suggested giving in to the more moderate demands and figuring out a plan that works for every griff. And while auto industry leaders like Lucky Break have cautioned against such a plan, saying that that would give legitimacy to the radicals in the Labour coalition. This is just simply waiting until the strikers out, playing off, playing factions off each other until the movement loses momentum. If that fails, the Queen can always assign back to work legislation forcing the strikers to return to their jobs. Is your mouth? They should return to work. That's your mouth. Come on down, have a griff here. Our home is among the most beautiful regions in the world, and visitors do agree. Opening for tourist enterprise will us another source of revenue, as well as making sure that thousands of creatures across the world will go home with positive experiences of us. And that's what matters. Ah. More cities, yeah. Slots. Total slots. Building slots 9. Nice. we got a while for these ones. Because we only have one. Oh, God. Because we're using a lot of our stuff, too, anyways. Yeah, well, oh, about one and a half a day is not bad. And more construction speed, because it's already February. Oh. A lot to do. Any more ships? Nope. Looking pretty good though. And we have no fuel, but what else is new? Uh, Aerosmith Rally in Squidville. 
Large crowds came out today as four of Air's first and their protectionist message in Squidville today. The group managed to attract thousands of sea ponies who see nothing to gain from foreign trade. Noted Air's first leader at Rapidwood led the rally, rallying the sea ponies and telling them that foreign powers wanted to exploit them and that the government had failed to stop it. It called upon Queen Nova to hear the voices of the little sea pony and protect the equestrian industry. Uh, he also called upon Erisian business scripts to open your eyes. There's an entire other half to a great kingdom. See the brave ponies, uh, brave sea ponies, and work with them for the good of the whole heiress. Do not concern yourselves with the zebras of Zumidia. The future of lies within these waters. Underwater conservatives made themselves heard. Cool. Nice. A few days left for that's not bad. I have two months and three and a half months left for that one. And the Hippogriff Miracle. From the shadows under the seas, our civilization has risen high. Gold skyscrapers now tower across uh, Mount Eris, rising out of the sea and binding the peoples together stronger than ever before. The Hippogriffia is now the shining, prosperous jewel of Sepulchrum, as she always was meant to be. Get 10% more stability, which is great, and 100 more political power. Uh, oh, clothing condition. The clothing debate has come to a head, with Eris first and their opponents both demanding that the Queen Noble take a solid position on the issue of foreign clothing in Hippogriffia. Raph White has presented a petition with thousands of signatures demanding that government workers only be allowed to wear clothing made in Hippogriffia, claiming that the influx of foreign clothing d dilutes our identity and damages our economy, leading to unrest and poverty. The petitioners claim that having government employees wear foreign clothing at work sends a particularly bad message because as servants of the crown, they're also representatives of Hippogriffia. It spreads the idea that foreign nation nations produce better cultural products than their own, which damages national unity. Uh, hardliners within the Air Force have demanded the government go even further, pointing to the lax labor laws and lower quality control standards in Griffonia, and arguing that Groody Griffins would still find ways to undercut and even destroy the Air's clothing industry, even with Raft's Woods supposed ban. More liberal voices have denounced the whole issue as a silly affair and have argued that no harmonious government should pass laws mandating what its citizens wear, uh, as doing so it would be an unacceptable breach of personal liberty. They have also argued that competition would breed innovation, and that the exchange of uh, fashion of hip between Hippogriffia and other nations would cause new and exciting fashion trends to develop, which would be stifled by the government issuing bans. Notably, Princess Sky Star and Prince uh, Silverstream have come out against Paolo's ban proposed bans. Then the Hippogriffia should be friendly towards other nations, while Silver, with Silverstream pointing to the Griffin and pony friends she made in Equestria as reasons why Hippogriffia doesn't need to be afraid of other creatures. Full ban? Ban? No ban. Oh god. Aerosworth Rally in Canterford. Another Aerosworth Rally was held today, this time in Canterford. Crack Lightning, who organized the rally, openly denounced the current Zumidian administration as foreign lowlifes leeching off the hard working Hippogriffs and called for Nova to either withdraw from Zumidia immediately or start making the zeros pull their own weight. He made sure to clarify, however, that he did not wish for bloodshed as a first choice, only that they pay their fair share and kindly excuse themselves from our great nation. The crowd rapidly became rowdy, trashing the park they rallied in and disrupting nearly every neighborhood with chants and parties afterwards, which lasted longer than the night. Oh, what does this one do? I like this one a lot. A coalition of local residents and progressive harmonists have called on Queen Nova to denounce Ares First as racist and inflammatory, but a spokesman for the Ares First protested that the rally had been entirely illegal and that Ares First supporters had broken no laws and caused no injury to any griff or life or property. Regards to the government's response, the size and enthusiasm of the rally goers show that Air's first message is reaching many hippogriffs in Canterford. So announcing them could cause a backlash. Free speech is important, but this is growingly worrying. We'll say nothing. It's alright. It's all good. Don't worry about it. So if we do this one, we can save like 100 army XP maybe? Or we could reach ourselves faster. Um, I'm, I'm pulling towards just going with this one, but we'll see. Who do I want next? Maybe this one? Railway, refinery, construction, engineering, stuffs. Do I want infantry, defense, or artillery? I think I might want to go with this one, actually. But the uh, Hippogriff Miracle, my friends. Ares first applies for a rally permit and harmonizing heights. And in the wake of the massive wave of support for their movement has garnered in recent times, Eris First has begun making preparations to hold a rally in a harmonizing heights neighborhood of Mount Eris, one of the most idyllic, idyllic spots on the mountain, and a popular destination for families on vacation, home to some of the oldest and grandest villas in Hippogriffia. Eris First seems to be pouring huge amounts of money and time into organizing this rally with a plan of tenants and thousands and an elaborate sound system planned to broadcast their message across harmonizing heights. However, when they applied for the permit to hold the rally, the local mayor denied it, citing concerns that the rally would damage the neighborhood. Bringing up the damage has been caused at some rallies in the past. Air's first leader, Raph Wood, was once high in Nova's court as appealed as a rejection directly to the Queen as an act unheard of until now, requesting that she overturn the mayor's decision and allow their peaceful gathering to go ahead. Wood said that in a heartfelt letter that Air's first has always stood in a location so in tune with the traditions 
uh, oh, has always stood in support of the monarch and merely wishes to make the message known in a location so in tune with the traditions of the nation they hold dear, and as well ensure the rally that did not ruin the scenery. Finally, argued that the mayor's decision was motiv motivated by anti Eris first bias and pre existing political genus against him, and that any other Arisian would allow him to hold a rally. Well, there's nothing truly illegal about the attempted rally. The concerns of the mayor are valid, and allowing this petition to be received by the queen would could show off uh, a show of official support for the monarch. Refuse to even hear the petition. Is that right? Approve the request? I didn't hear you. Was there a, a petition? Eris first denounces the government. Man sitting on the streets of Mount Eris as the Eris first rally set to be held. There has become a point of martyrdom for one of his leaders, Crack Lightning. Speaking to a small town outside of Mount Eris, as well as broadcasted it over the radio, he has rallied against the government's choice to prevent his rally from taking place. Stating the government claims to wish to bring the principles of freedom to our nation, yet they had somehow forgotten the freedom of speech. The hypocrites of Mount Eris wish to hear our truth, and somehow they allow one corrupt mayor to prevent us from speaking. Lightning's remarks were echoed by other Eris first speakers around the country, but the results seem to be lacking. The government's refusal to allow the rally to go ahead seems to have taken some steam out of the movement, especially since the Queen herself made no comment on the issue. Lightning was, however, quick to separate the Queen from the government, saying, Oh, Queen Noble, how have they failed to deceive you? One day you shall see that we were only fighting for your good, and you shall rid yourselves of those discussing the foreign lackeys who hold you hostage. Queen Noble declined to comment on, the, on this as well. It's a free speech only goes so far, which means it's not free, but that's not our problem. For now. Um... Yeah. yeah. I'll just go for now. We're gonna use them anyways. Why not? And then we uh, refuse to, use it to yield. Base strike carrier stuff. Nice. Hippogriff stage of protest. The crowd of hippogriffs stage of protest outside local government. Oh yeah. Uh, the, I've read this one before earlier too. Uh, see pony. We need hippogriffs. Actually, we can't do this one yet. Ooh, 30 political power. Oh god. Well, I guess. Queen Novo, huh? Oh, he gives us a lot of uh, stability. Queen of Hippogriffs and Sea Ponies. But then we gotta go down here. Organize a lot. So, how do we get more communist popularity then? The National Automotive Convention. Princess Skystar so pressed a yawn as she wandered through the hall. The Arisian Economic Society was hosting a national automotive uh, convention, bringing together leading economists and business groups. Because Queen Noble was unavailable, Skystar to represent the monarchy in this event, even though she didn't know much of anything about the automobile industry. As she listened to one more lecture on the benefits of sustainable growth, she might not be able to stay awake. Skystar wished that she could be doing something more important, like recruiting promising candidates for the government service. Harmonic absolutism was becoming increasingly impractical in the modern world. Hippogriffia needed to democratize and allow talented creatures from different backgrounds to attain high office. If there was something or someone in government with expertise in economic matters, they could help strengthen the kingdom's economy, not to mention that person would be the one attending boring conventions like this. The princess stopped when she noticed a large crowd in the corner of the room, listening to the blue hippogriff who spoke with much more energy than the other presenters. I'm a statistician at heart, but I spent five years working as a consultant for the car companies. In that time, I've had to force creatures to think deeply about their problems and address them realistically. It's a strategy called scientific management. Take my time at Cirrus Talent Claws Factory, for example. On my first day, I asked some questions about every little thing till he was red right in the face. But I took what I learned and I used it to find all the inefficiencies and slowdowns on the production line. Once we ironed those out, productivity increased by over 100%. Well, the audience burst into applause and Sky started joined him. Maybe she thought what Hippogriffia needs now is something like that. Rocket never fall. Princess Skystar, Rocket Never Fall said, is so informal yet confident. It's a pleasure to meet you. To what to what do I owe this honor? I just want to say that I really enjoyed your presentation on scientific management. It was a highlight of the whole convention, Skystar replied with a smile. Thank you, Princess, that means a lot. I'm interested in learning more about your consulting strategies. Would you be willing to discuss them with me perhaps over lunch? So, uh, certainly, Princess. Just name a time and place and I'll clear my schedule. Thank you so much. I think this would be a great opportunity for both of us. We should meet again soon, Mr. Neverfall. Is there a way to get more uh, comic support here? If not, I'll just replay all this again. So can't organize a left. Oh. Huh. Hold on. In the meantime. Ooh, yeah. Hippogriff primacy. Carrier stuff. Air oh, fighters like that. Or we go down this way. With naval stuff. Submodels, submodels, cruiser sub, which I don't really use that too much. Um, I really don't know which way I went last time.
We survive the storm king's invasion by hiding underwater. The sea shelters us, and it must be the sea we rely upon going forward. Even with modern subs, our enemies can't reach the sea floor, so we'll always have a safe place to flee to. But we're trying to open up to the role, so hippogriff pr primacy? We can't afford to cower on the depths any longer. The world is changing, and we're to take our place as a preeminent nation among the world, peoples of the world. It's time to change, too. I think this is probably the one we probably want to take instead. Okay, so I think I screwed up. I think I need to definitely get more, uh, communist, communist here. Magic of mathematics. Rocket never fall. Look down at the sky. I think the push his glasses back up his beak. Let me get this straight. You want me to be a government minister? Yeah, I think a grip with your talents can do a lot of good, Princess Skystar said before continuing her meal. It's an interesting proposition, Rocket side, but I'm not sure I'd be the right fit. I don't know anything about the government work. Then you're being good company. Skystar pulled her fork down. This kingdom has been an absolute monarchy for its entire history, so the number of creatures with actual governing experience is pretty small. Ever since we returned from Sequestria, my mother and I have been bringing in a few faces, a new faces, to advise us on all kinds of things. You can join them in learning the business of government. Rocket scratched his chin, seriously considering the idea. I need you to promise me final say over hiring and decision making in my department. My management strategies have encountered resistance in the past, and I want to be sure I can actually make a difference. Realizing she had pulled off a tough sell, Sky Star screen, that certainly can be arranged. It's a deal. Yeah, I think I screwed up. Because eventually we want to do this one, organize the left. The left is a desperate group of young socialists, anarchist thinkers, and beside us a radical revolutionary workers' party. This ragtag bunch is to accomplish anything. Cooperation will have to be put into place in one way or another. Hippogriffia will break free from the shackles of capitalism. And then the cult who would be king. After the final battle of the Storm King, Princess Skystar I was horrified by what she saw in Zumidia. The Yeti armies have been up the countryside, completely devastated, its economy in tatters, and its population traumatized. One of the saddest things the princess heard was the story of Zumidia's king. Crown Prince Zamni was barely more than a foal when the Storm King invaded, but the conqueror showed him no mercy. After executing his mother and father, the Yetis locked Zamni in a dungeon. He remained there alone and neglected until the hippogriffs defeated his captors. On days like today, when Skystar was in Ain Throt Gurait, on official business, she always made time to visit the young king. Hello, Zamni. Zamni bows slowly, giving you Princess Skystar. It's a pleasure to see you. Um, Zamni, you don't have to be so formal. Just call me Skystar. The young Zebra side, my tutors keep telling me I need to behave in a manner befitting a royal. They say appearance is a very important thing for a king. Well, it's true that kings need to behave regally in public, but there's no need to act that way among friends. As the pair settle into their usual routine of playing a board game, Zamni seem to do all in the princess's words. Is it important for kings to have friends, he asked. Of course, spending time with friends is important for every creature, Skysar replied, beaming with joy. Zamni's eyes widened. Since you're my friend, can you take me outside the palace so I can explore the city? Skysar smiled became a frown. I don't think your regency council would like that very much, but don't worry. I promise when you're older, I'll take you to Mount Eris and give you a full tour. Thank you, I'd like that, Zamni decided again, but it's like being king. Another thing I'll have to wait to do until I'm older. Royal or not, every child needs a friend. I have a beggar in the throne room. Queen Noble was shocked today, found a grimy beggar in the throne room on Mount Eris. The epigraph pleaded with the queen, telling her that the shelter he was staying in had been condemned and had nowhere to go. As he explained his tragic tale, Noble hissed to her advisors to get to Silverstream, who could always be relied upon to defuse tense situations, but she was nowhere to be found. Tensions rose as Noble deliberated, but some of her courtiers demanded the beggar be removed from the throne room as he began accusing the queen herself of not caring about the plight of the poor. The poor who always attended court sessions scribbled fiercely. Finally, Noble rose from her throne, her face betraying outrage. Though whether this was that was at the hippogriff's situation or just his impertinence, no griff could say. Silencing the room, she spoke. We need social reform, and we need it now. You are a failure. There's no one to blame but yourself. Um, well, I guess that's the way we need to go. We should have done that more beforehand. Uh, hopefully, get more events about communism and whatnot. But military governor. Uh, I want local autonomy because yeah, an engineer. Yeah, that should improve our situation slightly more. More rubber, I guess. Do we need more rubber? We really don't. Huh. Go figure. Daily supremacy port. Crack lightning, the ace. Plus point for air experience gain. Way more. Naval stuff is fine for now. I think it's just air that's going to be more. It's point one more. Net operations, air accidents. Uh, I'm gonna get honey. I like it. honey. Um, how many above all? Yeah. War sport. Unleash the Department of Defense. Army XP goes up. But plans. A lot of bonuses to research. Division organization is nice. Training grounds, national defense. Population would be very good too. Conscription laws, cost goes down as well. Underwater railways, national railways. We'll probably go with underwater railways. Two additional underwater building slots. Or get free infrastructure. 
I like this one. A, a decision to double underwater construction speed. And number of cities required. Um, land, air, warfare. Yeah, let's go with this one. Underwater railways. Building underwater railways will make our future underwater construction much faster. And even help us build things on the surface, should we desire to. It'll move our society in favor of sea ponies, however. Sometimes you gotta sacrifice things to do even better. Nice. Nice. Very good. Oh, uh, policy analyst, huh? Errors first protest against imported cars. Aeris First has sprung into action after a sensational news story broke in the Aeris Times. A wing body and made car from a Lucky Breaks auto dealership suffered a mal brake malfunction, sending a family of three careening into a telephone pole, leaving no survivors. On the wake of the tragedy, nearly 200 protesters gathered outside Lucky, uh, Lucky Breaks car dealership, picketing the entrance and refusing to leave even when the day turned to night and a rainstorm swept across a hastily erected camp. Lucky Break was nowhere to be found, but a protester organizer and AF founder, Raph Wood, told reporters that his followers would not leave until Lucky Break promised to stop buying wing bardian and new Marylander automobiles. It's a disgrace, he exclaimed. Uh, Lucky Break knows we produce perfectly good cars, and yet she insists on bringing on products from halfway across the world, damaging our economy and putting more and more of these foreign death traps on the road. Every grip knows that the Wing Bard and the New Maryland governments are subsidizing the companies. Every grip knows they, can't, they don't play fair. Well, we've had enough, and we won't leave until something is done about this. While the police managed to disperse the protesters after the third day, numerous newspaper editorials have come out supporting them, with Lucky Break and other industry leaders refusing to answer the protesters' demands, and have turned to the government in hopes of getting a ban on the import of foreign cars. But we're not going to do that. We need 4% more, that's all. God dang it. Fire Lucky Breaks car dealership. Uh, shock shook airs today as a trio of arsonists set fire to Lucky Breaks car dealership in a small house uh, in the small hours of the night. The three grips were all members of the airs first and have expressed no regrets over their actions, which caused over a million bits worth of damage to the building and the vehicles with them. When questioned, the perpetrator said they were only doing what the government refused to do by striking at the greedy Lucky Break, who was endangering our lives and our livelihoods. Eris first uh, spokesman Rap Wood has condemned their actions, although he says he sympathizes with their situation. As they're trying to plead guilty, and the prosecution will uh, show a little mercy to the three hippogriffs down on their luck. We cannot have harm if we can accept others. Say nothing that they judge fairly. They're only doing the right thing they thought was fair. Well, that doesn't help us. We can destroy at least these guys, but doing that won't give us enough time and support here. Hmm. Revolutionary, so my god. Public works infrastructure. We do that one. Uh, oh, research slot. More than 25 cities. Or we get it refined underwater construction techniques. Constructing under buildings underwater uh, makes them immune to strategic bombing. As long as the quest just stands with us, we'll have an impervious industry. I'll go ahead and do that one, anyways, for now. Shell companies, commerce, Department of Defense, continue Navy modernizations, Royal Shipbuilding, so is anything unique here? Um, sword efficiency is good. Heavy hulls, nothing super important yet. Um, Form the Department of Commerce. While we are a modern nation, the fact remains that we, as the world uh, changes at breakneck speeds, we run the risk of being left behind. If we are to safeguard our technological advantage, we need to keep advancing. This one used to give us like some kind of support too. So right now we're balanced, aren't we? Yeah. Ogabi. I might go back and uh, kind of reload the save from earlier to make sure that uh, <laughs> we get where we really need to be. Organizing the leftist coalition, originating out of book clubs and desperate political ideals, our coalition is none of the ideological purity that strict revolutionaries had managed in the past. Now that we find ourselves in power, 
There are very real differences between the communist, democratic socialists, and anarchists among our coalition become clear by the day. A power struggle is inevitable. Despite these differences, there's a lot of goodwill between the factions, which has led to some proposing a sort of pact where each faction guarantees not to suppress to others and always to treat each other as comrades no matter whose side comes out on top. No matter who comes out to dominate, we're a team. Our ideology has to stay pure. No guarantees. We're a team. Um, I think that sounds like a good thing to do. Um, sure. We're a team. So, we've got that unlocked because right now we have literally 25.45% uh, stuff right there. Uh, naval XP gain. Yeah, I'll do that one too, like I said earlier. I uh, went back and reloaded the save, like I said, and I didn't realize we were already on superior firepower. Um, so I went ahead and just went and got this so we can expand um, our divisions. I threw on another artillery a battalion on our divisions, so they're like 21 combat with now. Uh, eventually, we can do the Marxist Revolution, but before we do that, organize and weaponize the left. The largest portion of the left are radical students who desire free college, health care, and perhaps even universal basic income. But a dictatorship of the proletariat is off putting to them. They have must inform them all the good they'll have access to under revolutionary communism. More research speed. Deal with the anarchists. Uh, the anarchists are once our closest allies and our fiercest competitors, for while our goals are very similar, we also know that one vision will come out to dominate Hippogriffia. To keep goodwill among afloat and keep us cooperating, we should make some concessions, such as promising to permit non historical or hierarchical schools once we have power. Sway the harmonists. The Harmonists have a curious bunch. The values are quite similar to ours, but they are willing, unwilling to go all the way to achieve those values. We must engage in debates and proselytizing to win new supporters. Conspire with unions. With a few choice words uh, to organize the unions, we can paralyze the economy, reminding the bourgeois just how badly they need us. Form theater clubs. One of Posada's brain children, um, theater clubs allow for discussion of Communist Party principles and organizing more efficiently. They can also be picked for quotable slogans we can plaster on poster boards and pamphlets. This one seems very strong. Radicalize the moderates. A commitment to better working conditions and fair pay, while admirable, is hardly enough. We must shift the window of acceptable public opinions left for far left. Soon, the mainstream figures will be calling for the abolition of the wage system. We lose stability, but gain war support. Train revolutionary comrades, or cadres. Well, we hope it does not come to that. An army's direction may prove the only path to communism. Uh, we must begin secretly acquiring weaponry, fuel, and be training soldiers to fight. Embolden Marxist students. As Rosie Luxembourg wrote in on the Sev Severian a Severyanian revolution. Either the most radical parts of a revolution will inevitably come to dominate, or the revolution will slide back into reaction to monarchism. There are a condition of students who, despite being Marxists, restrict their demands of democratic social state with a figurehead monarchy. We must help them build the courage and demand a true dictatorship of the proletariat, and pros uh, proletarize the lumpen. The lumpen proletariat, the robbers, thieves, charlatans, all who get by on the labor of others, are a potential army of or the reactionaries and a lack of class consciousness. In order to broaden our appeal and neutralize the threat in one move, we'll begin a campaign to teach theory and class consciousness to the lumpen proletariat. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Form a program for the United Front of the Left. While the RWP has come to a greater prominence than the SLPA, they are still some of our best allies, and the PCCA is still wary about a transitory state. We should reach out to Selena Blue and Sponge Sluice to create a manifesto we can all agree on, broadening our appeal and creating a powerful force that can stand united against reaction. Left program, and then we have a uh, give Skybolt Spear a platform. One of our only friendly contacts in the military, Skybolt Spear, is seriously considered joining Skynavia's radical movement, and so his friends there. He can provide a valuable persuader of the proletarian members of the Air's First, of course. His paranoia will mandate strong security measures. Interesting. I like this one a lot. The Foreign Theory Club seems like a really good idea, and we're out of political power, but I think we might end it there. We're going to do a lot of those ideas and focuses as we uh, um, have done before. Right now we are hippogriff leaning. Uh, we'll go with that one. Um, and just the ones we the focuses we've already done, you know, like this one, Revive refine underwater construction techniques, uh, form the Department of Commerce, uh, construction, Department of Defense, well, the Department of Defense will be good to do as well. In a role filled with threats, we need a strong army to safeguard our borders. This department will cover both our army's modernization and its central administration, because we will need national defense draft eventually, too. That'll be very, 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 very important. Uh, or enough defense draft. In these terrifying towns, we have to take drastic measures. Queen Nova has, after extensive deliberation, decided to institute a limited draft. This decision is not taken lightly, but we must ensure the safety of all sea ponies and hippogriffs. Hippogriffia will never flee again. Long distance friendships. We want to be self reliant, but that does not mean we're going to forget the friends we do have. Those who give kindness can be given in return, given it in return, and we will both be stronger for it, and then lend lease. 
Even if we cannot directly aid our friends in war, we can still make sure they are given the tools needed to finish the job. Our factory stand ready to turn out the countless weapons needed, and our friends will have access to it for the lowest price we can charge. And it'll get slow more put in fire, too. Or, I should really say, worse part. But, if you enjoyed the first episode of us trying to become communists, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow. We'll see, you else, see what we can do, and hopefully, hopefully, eventually turn just a wee bit communist. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.